This is Paw Print, an animal rescue community. Episode 101. I'm Harold Ree. I'm Nancy Ree. Today's guest is the amazing Patrick Major. He was just absolutely amazing. He would come to me in the uh, in the mornings and get me out of bed by bringing socks and things that he would tear up, pieces of paper, for me to throw them off the bed to keep me awake. We met Patrick Major several years ago when our good friend and former guest, Risa Morimoto, was producing an episode for Animal Planet called Saved. So Risa needed a venue to interview Patrick Major. And um, since he lived in the Bay Area, we offered our house. If you look carefully at the episode, you can see a corner of our house for about two seconds. Patrick's story reminds me a lot about Eric O'Gray's story from episode 34. Both stories are a wonderful illustration of the question, who rescued whom? If you want to learn more about Patrick Major and his dog, Sammy Davis, go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 101. That's the number 101. I got sick in 1998 with uh, kidney failure and decided in 2003 to uh, rescue a dog. And when I rescued that dog, my first dog ever, it became an amazing experience for me. I uh, had been suffering from quite a bit of depression for many, many years, um, due to the uh, to the kidney dialysis and the failure of the kidneys, and then also living with uh, a bone and muscle disease called CMT that I inherited from my mother in the sixth grade. That it hit me in the sixth grade. So living with all those different things, uh, I suffered from a little bit of depression and uh, contemplated suicide. Mm. So I decided to buy a dog. And when I purchased that dog, I drove around and looked everywhere and uh, ended up picking the dog up in Madera, California. And uh, from out of a a group of five other dogs. And the dog was uh, a special dog. And when um, the dog hit four months old, he caught parvo. And I took him into the vet, and uh, I thought he was going to die, and I was attached to him at that point. Uh, You want to maybe explain a little bit about what parvo is? Parvo is a puppy disease that um, that if you take the puppy out too soon or the puppy doesn't have its shots, which I, I was aware that I found out later that the dog was born with parvo, and... Um, and it was a very slight chance that the dog would survive. And the dog did survive. And I picked him up in uh, a veterinarian um, clinic in Castro Valley. And after I brought him home, uh, it, he was just absolutely amazing. He would come to me in the, uh, in the mornings and get me out of bed. And uh, by bringing socks and things that he would tear up, pieces of paper, for me to throw him off the bed to keep me awake and to keep me out of bed because I wouldn't get out of bed every day. And when I did, it took me probably 25 minutes to tie a shoe. Well, how was the health affecting you in other ways? Were you able to keep a job? I mean, I, like, I, I'm just curious. Like, what, what was going on in your life? I, I couldn't keep a job. Um, I was... Uh, I was pretty sick. I was drained every day. Dialysis at that time was four hours a day, uh, three days a week. And um, the depression was just something that, you know, that you you couldn't cure. I I mean, with medications and things like that that I was taking, it just made me tired. The blood, my blood pressure was high. The the stress was, was, it was a high stress level. And, uh, I thought the best way to end that was through suicide. Mm. And I had a wonderful girlfriend and she talked me into buying a dog because she read somewhere where it, uh, it helps depression with depression. And, I, and I, of course I was reluctant to that. I kind of was like, oh no, I'm this big macho guy that you know drives a, goes to car shows and drives Harleys and I'm not gonna have a little dog. But I was open to it because I was at the end of my rope and uh, went to look for a dog hmm. and found this dog. And uh, like I said, he got parvo. And I, I think that he maybe thought that I saved his life. It was time for him to save mine. And the, uh, 
th- when I had I had to name him, which is a funny story behind that. I had to name him, and I took two weeks to name him because I wasn't really uh, I was a little apprehensive about having a dachshund because that's the dog I picked because I thought I was too cool for a dachshund. <laughs> Well, you, how tall are you? How tall? I, I'm six foot, about 178 pounds, and thought I was too good for a dachshund. And what would people say, me walking a dachshund? So, and also as well as uh, dachshunds like to run. So they're, they're not very good off leash. The funny thing is, is that he almost must have, he, he, he had to have known that I wear braces, so there was no way I could chase him. So he stayed right with me, no leash, all the time. From day one? From day one, day one. And sat at my feet whenever I stopped. Which is really unusual for a doxy. Very unusual for doxies. Right. So I, uh, I finally, uh, back to his name, I finally, uh, I was up all night watching TV, and my girlfriend said, hey, uh, you know Sammy Davis, because he was on TV, He's Jewish. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, he, he converted to Judaism. And my girlfriend's Jewish. And I said, well, there it is there. You know, Sammy Davis will name the dog Sammy Davis. I'm black. You're Jewish. Let's name <laughs> Sammy Davis. There he is. There it is. It was it was perfect name. So that's how he got his name, Sammy Davis. And I didn't name him Sammy Davis Jr. because... I really thought somewhere spiritually that he was going to be famous and wow. Okay. <laughs> what a, t- what a run it's been. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. Know. So tell us a little bit about then from, from there, right? So, so Sammy Davis in a lot of ways got you going, uh, health wise, how did you change, uh, other parts of your life? How did you change? So, uh, wow. Health wise, um, I was still sick. It was 2000, um, early 2004 and I thought I start I'm, I'm a very spiritual person in the energy of, of God and things like that so I, I would you know pray often and think that you know hey you sent me this wonderful dog he's gotten me out of this depression but it's time to get me what I need not what I want it's what I need to live so I prayed on that for a kidney and I remember one night I stayed up all night praying in tears on the bathroom floor, sick as ever. And I, I got on my knees and I, it was 4.30 in the morning, never forget this, and cried and cried and cried and just asked God to please just grant me this kidney. I went back to bed at probably 6 a.m., you know, not sleeping, and I uh, went to sleep and my phone rang and I, I answered the phone, What? And, uh, it was UCSF hospital saying, we have a kidney for you. And I, after that, I got dressed and they asked me if I was ready and I was ready. And, uh, I, um, got dressed and went to the hospital and got the transplant. And I I just, from that point on, I felt my story needs to be heard. So I started racing my dog in wiener dog races because I saw he had a talent of speed and he was smart. And I started winning races all over California and telling my story about how he saved my life. And he, people started to adhere to the fact that, wow, this is a miracle. And uh, I had a friend, uh, his name is Dan Rosenthal. He uh, worked for the Contra Costa Times and had taken a picture of me at, an event I was doing for Disc Dogs of the Golden Gate um, of Sammy racing some kids. And he took that picture and I went to Golden Gate Fields to race him and I met Dan there and he says, hey, I took a picture for the newspaper of you and your dog six months ago. And I said, wow, really? He said, let me get your contact. And uh, he ran the story by the Contra Costa Times um, newspaper and the Contra Costa Times thought it was an amazing story and ran it on the front page of the newspaper. So this photographer took a picture of you six months before you meet him again, just kind of almost like a random coincidence or just a coincidence. And then from there, the story, the story blew up. 
Wow. Hit the newspaper. Um, story uh, went online, 120,000 hits in a weekend. Uh, got in the front page of the newspaper when they had released the hostages from Iran. Ran right with that story on the front page. And uh, in what year, what year was this? Oh, wow. That was probably 2000. Uh, Eight, maybe. Okay. Yeah, possibly 2008. And then a few years, uh, about a year later, I was contacted on the phone when I was driving. And don't drive and talk on the phone. But I answered it because it was a weird number. And it was fate as well. And it was uh, the producers of Animal Planet. And they said, we want to do a story on you. And I said, <laughs> I, I laughed and I said, yeah, right. You know, I thought it was some kind of prank. And they said, no, really, we're going to send a guy to your house and uh, we're going to um, do a story on you. He's going to come with a video camera and we're going to videotape your story. So I said, OK, whatever. So January of, of 2000 um, of 2010, they came to my house and uh, with the small video camera, still thought it was some kind of joke. And he videotaped me and called me. Uh, a couple months later and said, hey, we love your story. We're doing 50 stories and um, we're picking 12 and yours is one of them. And wow. we're, we're going to film you and we're going to come to your house. It was an unpaid uh, story and, and show. But the exposure I got and the lives and the emails and the people that have come to me and talked to me and I feel like you know, I, I'm inspired by that. They were inspired by my story is more than any money that I could ever have been offered hmm. to, to have these opportunities to talk to people. That's great. And, and then also save animals at the same time mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and get the word out about how our pets can save our lives with unconditional, non-judgmental love. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and my dog never judged me for being disabled or being sick and you know going into my childhood it was it was rough if and the the entire story is on animal planet which i put onto youtube mm -hmm. if anybody wants to watch it sure. you just you know uh, search my name patrick major and it's there maybe we can go back to um the topic of parvo because that is usually a, a pretty deadly disease for dogs and nowadays, it's only recently that they're able to effectively treat it. But this was um, a ways back. So right. um, I don't think the, the, the treatment knowledge was there as much as now. So Sammy Davis probably did not have a high chance of surviving Parvo, but he, he did. Um, so can you just talk a, um, a little more about, um, you know, that, that illness and how all that, um, you know, played out and, uh, how, he, how he was able to overcome it. Wow. It was, it was a pretty emotional time for me because like I said, I only had him a couple months. He was four months old and I had gotten him at eight weeks and I brought him home and he was, uh, he was, he, he, he was very active and he played a lot and he started to lose weight was one sign, uh, diarrhea, another sign, and he didn't want to eat. And first dog, so let's go back to, I never had a dog before. So I didn't know what I was going right. to do. You're, you're like, what is <laughs> yeah. going on? So, uh, 2004, you know, AOL, <laughs> you know, internet was there, but very slow dial up. Sure. And I literally got in the phone book and looked in the phone book for a vet and found um, a vet in Castro Valley or San Leandro Castro Valley area and uh, and took him there blindly, not knowing if he was a good vet or a bad vet or not knowing what Parvo was. Yeah, we didn't have uh, Yelp at the time or, right. or any Yelp. other way to kind of. Right. <laughs> yeah, none of that. So I, I did the old yellow pages and found this guy and he was. Um, he was from India and he was a very, very, very nice man. I was, you know, um, in the room, they called me in the room and I could hear the, the nurse say, Oh my God. And they came in the room and said, 
it's a very low chance he survives. And I mean, tears just flew out of my eyes, you know, and I, I was sitting in the room thinking, oh, I ain't had him that long. It's not a big deal. I'll just, you know, whatever it is, you know, I'll just have to get me another dog. But it was past that point mm-hmm. when they told me he had Parvo. They said, we'll call you in three days. Didn't sleep for three days. Mm-hmm. Had to get up Monday morning and go to dialysis. And he says, that I get this call and he says, hey, your dog's fine. Come pick your dog up. <laughs> uh, how soon did this happen? Did they three days later? Oh, three days in yeah. three days. Wow. Three days later. Wow. Unbelievable. That's a miracle. Miracle. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. So, I mean, the, the, that's the thing. The entire story is is an amazing miracle mm. that this one little dog came into my life for a purpose. You know, and, and you just know, you just know that that our, our animals are just amazing creatures that are yeah. here for us. You know, of course, you know, dogs spell backwards. God, who there knows? Go. Right. <laughs> who knows? I, I don't, you know, I'm not one to preach about things that people want to do or do or do not deny. But, yeah, you got to believe in something. And Sammy Davis did have some talents that you helped develop. You want to maybe talk about his uh, disc dog career? Okay, yeah. The funny thing is, is that uh, the talent that he had was I would throw things and he would jump in the air and catch him out of the air. Like it was a regular thing at, at a young, young age. And his drive was just amazing, somewhat like a border collie. And I said, wow, do I have... Border Collie Dachshund or something, you know? <laughs> so that's when I decided to, you know, I was going to put him in the racing. And then I took him to uh, an event at Niles and I entered him into a Frisbee competition. And people were absolutely amazed that a Dachshund can catch a Frisbee. And that was part of my platform to be able to uh, tell my story about, you know, um, hit his story with me. And um, he's now 14, so I've retired him from Frisbee. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing because I've had a second transplant, and he's still here. And I look at him every day, and I think, are you just, are you really still here because you're really worried? I mean, through my th- th- the last three years of another dialysis stint, he's been there for me. And he's been there and, and I, you know, I've accepted that he's getting older and, and, uh, and I may lose him soon, but I've also accepted that what I'm going to take from this, this story is what have I learned about my animals in life and what have I learned about life? And I think sometimes things are put here in our lives to make us realize what we need. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest lessons? Biggest lesson for me is... No matter what, you can't change it. You can't change it. You can't, you can't change that I'm sick. You can't change that I may possibly die. I may, the kidney may fail, but it's how you deal with it. It's how you focus on the things that you keep other people going, how you can pay it forward and spread the message of, of not being depressed and not relying on drugs to bring you up and make you feel better. When it's inside you, the tools, the, the, the hormones, the things that are inside you is, is what you need to realize that are good for you. And a little dog helped you discover those, right. some of those lessons, right? A little tiny dog. Hmm. Not my car. <laughs> <laughs> not my 72 Chevelle, not my Harley, not all the things that I possess. So Sammy's been healthy yeah, he's, since he's that still, with Parvo. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's been very healthy. He's not, um, his back is still good. He, he still, uh, he still runs. I think he's used, losing a little bit of his eyesight. I wanted to, uh, put him in some more races, but most of the opinion is, uh, go out on top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think I've done that, you know, yeah. state fair two years in a row sure. banned from that. <laughs> oh, you know, you can only win two oh, okay. years. <laughs> so um, wiener dog races three times, warrior game once told, um, he was on steroids, right. <laughs> you know, 
it. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a dachshund to perform that at such a high level, right? At such a high level. I mean, uh, people have accused me of that, uh, that he's on steroids. I cheat. He's, uh, he's not, I, I, he's so focused. It, right. He's an amazing runner. Amazing. I, I, I mean, he's just, I've never seen a dog like him. Okay. Ever. Spiritually as well. As they say, he's your heart dog, right? Right. 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 Since then, you've expanded your dog family, though. You want to right. talk, uh, share a little bit about that? I uh, got a dog, uh, an Australian Shepherd. She's eight years old. She's a um, canine performer. So we do uh, we do the San Jose Earthquakes game halftime show. Oh, wow. Uh, with uh, Disc Dogs of the Golden Gate. We also do uh, a lot of animal rescue. Um, our club does a lot of animal rescue shows uh, for animal rescues, of course, that, um, that need us to, as canine performances to keep the crowd entertained. Why, you know, the rescue has vendors and, you know, and we do that if it's a rescue event, we do it at no cost. If it's a, you know, a sponsored event, we do charge. We also do, uh, we also do, um, kid shows at, at schools and things like that. Um, festivals, just various things. And I also have a, uh, up and coming little guy, my second little dog. I guess I'm the little dog guru in Frisbee. <laughs> These little dogs tend to come my way and want to, want to play. And he's a Yorkie, silky, Shih Tzu mix what I, I have no idea what he is he's like a gucci dog he's like a gucci dog and he's cute as ever and he's an amazing frisbee dog starting he's three years old he's been doing frisbee since he was seven months old i've been training him and he uh he's really good so this year i'm going to start performing with him in shows i'm also dog training I'm doing some dog training for friends and people that, you know, Facebook me and say, hey, my dog has issues. Wow. So, you know, can you come? And I say, yeah. And, and uh, I've been pretty successful with that. Um, I'm doing uh, Rotary Club talks. I also work in conjunction with uh, HYA, Hayward Youth Academy, which is my brother's nonprofit. And um, he... Uh, uh, we, we accept donations there for um, sending kids to college. And um, we do uh, with St. Uh, St. Mary's College in Moraga. We have uh, events there every year and bring kids to the games, the basketball games. And uh, we talk about um, we have like a career thing and they get a, a tour around the college, mm. things like that. So we do that. And um, uh, my brother's really involved in that. I'm involved with him. And this education, hmm. he's big on education and, and I'm big on education and I'm primarily, uh, starting second and third grade kids is where I feel, which I'm not an educator. I'm, I'm educated, but not an educator. Let's make that clear. Uh, I believe that second and third graders is where it starts and reading hmm. and being able to read out loud and, and focus and things like that. And I, I feel like that uh, our animals can, the kids read to the animals and they feel less, uh, they feel less stressful, stressed on, on, type, on that type of uh, environment where they could read out loud to the dog and not get judged. Hmm. Like our, our dogs don't judge us. Right, you know, and the, right. they, they, they don't judge the children and the children read pretty good. Yeah. So the last, your more, most recent two dogs um, were both adopted. Right. Right. And you did not adopt them because they were talented. You, you t trained them after you adopted them. Right. Is that exactly. correct? Okay. The, uh, the Yorkie was in a situation, not a bad situation. Uh, the lady worked quite a bit. Um, she's a good friend of mine. She worked and, uh, the dog was in the kennel most of the day and didn't have much time. And I kind of bugged her and bugged her and bugged her. Hey, I'll take him. I'll take him. I'll take him. And, uh, and I was determined to, to train him and he, he, he's been pretty successful. Right. Wow. And, and listening and training and tricks and things like that. Give us the names of your two, two newer dogs. Uh, Karma is my Australian Shepherd. 
and Marley is my uh, Yorkie mix. So I got Karma, Marley, and Sammy Davis. Of course, with the with the movie Marley and Me, I'm, I'm thinking of a big dog. But of course, if I meet, well, meet Marley, it's going to be well, yeah, or maybe Bob Marley. Sammy <laughs> oh, Davis, there you go. Okay, Sammy Davis is a celebrity. Okay, and Good Karma and Bob oh, yeah. Marley. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> If you remember, right, we reached out to you last year. And of course, you emailed me back and said, Harold, I'm so sorry. I'm getting my second <laughs> kidney transplant. And I thought to myself, okay, I don't know if the timing's so good then. <laughs> right. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about that story. Oh, man, Harold, this has been a crazy ride for me. So, wow. My, my first kidney lasted nine years failed in 2012 and I was taken off the anti-rejection medication and put back on dialysis. Now technology just as um, we were talking about earlier, technology has changed in the medical field as far as even with Parvo, it's changed as much in the last three years as far as dialysis. So they found that taking a person off the medication will cause a high antibody level. Well, my antibody level went to 94% being off the medication and it uh, made me almost ineligible for another transplant because- Oh, you were almost too healthy. Right. It's okay. Yes. Okay. So the, so what, what, what was happening is, is they were, they had to try to figure out a way to lower your antibodies, which Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, Maryland, can do such. They can lower your antibodies, change your blood type, uh, do miracles with with uh, plasma phoresis uh, therapies, um, uh, rituximax, all the new drugs they have. So I lobbied to go to Johns Hopkins. I went to Cedar Sinai in L.A. I went to UCSF, and then I said, "Hey, I did my own research and was my own advocate, and went to John. Told my doctor I wanted to go to Johns Hopkins, and he sent me there. They said they could help me. They listed me, and I went on the list there. And I think of March of 2000, uh, uh, 12, 13, uh, 13. So I went there 2013." I waited another three years and they called me January 6th, 2016 to come and have the therapy. And they found actually a, a perfect match for me. And they gave me a Rituximax to lower my mid to moderate antibodies and make me healthy enough to accept the kidney. And um, so far, so good. It's been a year. It's Amazing. been a year. Amazing. And my dog's still with me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> how did the second transplant, I mean, how was it a different experience? Well, um, first they call, okay, so my second transplant was, uh, this, this is another amazing story. So I, I pulled up to AMPM in Dublin, California, and saw in the window, $400 million, okay? And I said, wow, that's a lot of money. It's a, it was a uh, Tuesday night. I was tired. I was just, again, looking for the dream, <laughs> you know, feeling the dream. And I looked at that 400 million. I said, man, I feel lucky. I'm gonna go in there and play my own numbers. I went in there and played my own numbers and I walked out to the car and I left my cell phone in my car and I walked back out to the car and my, I had a missed call and I said, wow, who's this 410 area code? Check the message and the, it was Johns Hopkins said, right. call us back. It's Maryland, right? It's Maryland. So I said, wow, let me call him back. So I called her back and she said, Hey, Mr. Major, we have a guy that just came in. So it was, uh, uh, it was one o'clock their time and it was 10 o'clock our time. And she says, we have a guy here in the, um, in the, uh, ER and we're going to take him down to the OR. He's 20 years old and he just passed away and you're a perfect match. Do you want to do this? You got 24 hours. And you, and then obviously you got to fly across the country, <laughs> so California, said, Maryland. You know, heck yeah, I want to do this. 
not exact those exact words, but I said, yeah, I want to do this. So I went home, uh, no bags packed, barely anything. They said, we'll call you at 10 a.m. your time, which I'll be on dialysis Wednesday morning. I'm on dialysis setting up the flight information with, um, and remember, this doesn't always go through. You know, he, they could, they said, we have a kidney and a pancreas. We have two kidneys, one pancreas. The kidney and pancreas goes to someone else and the kidney goes to you. But if one of the kidneys is bad or both kidneys are bad, you don't get. Hmm. Okay. So I said, okay. So, or if one kidney's good, it goes to kidney pancreas. So they don't want to waste the pancreas, but both kidneys were good. And the pancreas was good. And they called me at 10 and I said, so I set up the, the rank, get the, got the arrangements going. I was on the plane by three o'clock in the afternoon, barely any bags, freezing cold, 17 degrees in, uh, in Maryland and, and, uh, walk up to the hospital and, and it was amazing. Hi. I, I, w- I had the transplant that next morning. Mm. Okay. That next morning I was up ready, you know, still knocked out, but feeling good urinating right away because mm-hmm. you stop urinating after, sure. you know, your kidneys fail. And I was urinating right away and, uh, I felt good. So I, I, uh, I guess I did win the lotto, mm. you know, the lotto life. And I, I posted that story about a month later on Facebook and Frank Somerville reposted it. Oh yeah. Channel two. Yeah. And, uh, and said some really nice things and I got a lot of the hits on it and a lot of nice people commented and, and, uh, and and life is, life is, uh, quite amazing for me. You know, how is having a dog, or having several dogs, how did that help you cope through all the ordeal of, uh, you know, kidney dialysis and transplant and, you know, that's got to be pretty stressful and, I mean, it, it takes a lot out of you and how, how is, how have the dogs um, helped you through all that? I think it's more uh, what it's taught me. It's taught me to be thankful for still being here. I think sometimes we, uh, we look at our lives and we go, well, I don't have that, or I don't have this, or I'm not doing this right, or I'm not doing that right. But a lot of times we're not thankful for our lives. And we're not thankful for our dogs running around the house and barking and making mm-hmm. noise and, and walking up to us and jumping on the couch and flopping down on our lap or just look at us and kiss us on the ear or just something crazy, mm-hmm. you know, that we, we, we kind of, uh, we kind of don't appreciate, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I think now it's time that we kind of decide to really appreciate where we're living because how we're living, because there's nothing you can do about when you get sick yeah. other than to, it, it, other than to just uh, to deal with it. I, I had a mother that got really sick, and I think at times she wasn't very happy. Mm. And then that's when I told myself, I'm not going to pass on and people to remember me as some angry man that got sick and couldn't cope with loving himself. Mm. And it starts with that, just loving yourself and, and, and how you're going to make yourself happy and how you're going to get past that. Mm. If folks want to find you, if folks want to look you up, tell us a little bit more. Your website, if you're on social media. I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook. And uh, my uh, my social media uh, Facebook is Patrick Major. Okay. And you'll see my picture will be me with my dog reading with the child. Okay. And my Instagram is dog style. So oh. it's D-O-G-G-S-T-Y-L-E dog style and my um my website is meet sammy com. my email is meet sammy davis at yahoo.com and you can find my the uh, animal planet show saved on youtube and just put in patrick major okay and you'll see my picture in the 
okay. on the YouTube link. So if people call you up for an event, w- what are some of the things you offer? Obviously, you mentioned karma, and right. you mentioned up, uh, coming up Marley, but what, what kinds of things do you, do you usually offer? Uh, I offer... Um offer uh, some some tips on training. I'm with Disc Dogs of the Golden Gate, so most of my work is done through them on the event calendar. So if you want to uh, host an event or you want us to come out or you want me to come out and, and have the dog you read to your, to your child, you can contact me on Facebook under Patrick Major or Disc Dogs of the Golden Gate. Contact our club and we'll come out and I'll definitely be there. Or you can... Uh, Contact me on my Facebook if you have any special questions and, and I can answer them. And I also do talks, uh, inspiring talks, show my show, my show on um, that was on Animal Planet and do a 20 minute talk about uh, my life and what we need to do about pets and saving them and, and what they can do for us. We want to say thank you to Patrick Major for sharing his story. We also want to say thank you to Risa Morimoto, guest on episode 49, for connecting us with Patrick. If you want to learn more about Patrick and see some great photos of Sammy Davis, Karma, and Marley, you can go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 101. If you want to meet me or Nancy on social media, you can check out our Instagram page where we feature plenty of photos of all our former guests along with some crazy photos of our own dogs and our fosters. Our profile is at This Is Paw Print, all one word. If you'd like to listen to more episodes of Paw Print, you can find us on your favorite podcast app, such as iTunes, SoundCloud, or iHeartRadio. Search for Paw Print Animal Rescue and hit subscribe to get the latest episodes immediately. We want to say thanks to all of you for sharing paw print with your friends and family. There's no way we could have reached this many episodes without you. So thank you. Stay tuned for our next episode where we feature Ellen Westcamper of Bald is Beautiful Dog Rescue in Greenville, South Carolina. And remember, you spread a positive message of love and peace by saving an animal. Have a great day, everyone. And see you next time. On Paw Print is a production of EVER Education. You can handle the truth.